<clears throat> Hi everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RDRV Glass Studio channel. Tonight we're doing a live Q&A about stained glass. We're answering your questions. Yeah, we are. Hey, Ray, nice, good to see you tonight. Thanks for tuning in. I want to give you a big thumbs up. Thank you, Guy. Appreciate it. And so uh, we'll be doing a glass chat, and we'll do be doing a live demo, and we'll be answering your questions. So yep. Emily and Rhino are here. Hey, guys. Good to see you all. It was great meeting you all this past week, and we've thoroughly enjoyed it. So. Me, Mike P. is here. Julie Graves, Jennifer Enlow, Mark Mason, Mary Haycraft. Uh, we've got people from all over here. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in tonight. It's a beautiful Monday here in South Carolina. So thanks for tuning in. And if you have a question, just leave it in the chat and uh, we'll get started with questions in just a few minutes. Sure we will. That's great. Um, we'd like to uh, say hello to our friends at Sunshine Glass. They're sponsors of our show. And uh, they, yeah. they have over 1,500 colors of glass in stock. Yeah, so we want to thank Sunshine for being part of the live stream tonight and every Monday night. And uh, again, you know, we just want to let you know they do have 1,500 colors of glass in stock. And uh, that's a lot. Along with all your hand tools and everything else. So thanks again, Sunshine. We appreciate it. Patricia Hike is here. C. Sim is here. Ellen Bryson, wow, everybody's here. Mike Waits here, Sarah, uh, Sarah Diana, Magali. Hi, Magali. Hey, Good everybody. Evening, everyone. And, oh. uh, you know, that's funny that you're here to party, Magali, because you know what today is? Today is Artie RV's second birthday. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, it's happy birthday. It. We just realized it. Uh, YouTube sent us a note and say, hey, today's your birthday. So, so we've been on the air for two years, y'all, and we couldn't have been here without every right. one of y'all. That's it's, right. Uh, without you guys, we're not here. Uh, yeah, and we have over 2 million views as well and 9,500 subs as of this morning. So, uh, yeah, we're moving right along. We yeah, so have you guys. What'd you back. say? 9,500 sub subscribers. 9, 500. You know, we were trying to, we're trying to make 10,000 subscribers by the first of the year. I have a sneaky feeling. Thanks to you guys and your friends. We're going to make it this month. Maybe. Cat St. Jane, Kathy Katz here. Uh, everyone's saying happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We've come a long way, haven't we? Yeah, we really have. So, and uh, how's hey, how's the audio and video tonight? Everything's good for everyone. We hope it it looks good in here. We just want to make sure it's it's looking good out there for you. Hope everyone's having a great week or the beginning of a great week. It's Monday. It feels like a yeah. It's a beginning Monday. of a great week. <laughs> It really is. It's the beginning of a great week. So we have a Jonas here. We have a great. Uh, we have a great. Thank you, Magali. We have a great uh, show for y'all tonight. Uh, along with questions coming in from you guys, I did bring my soldering irons in tonight. So we're going to share a little bit about that. And um, you're going to cut some glass. We're going to cut some glass. We're going to we're going to we're going to cut some uh, Euroboros glass. We're not going to hear our cutter, but you can believe it's going to work. So. Stick around for that, and uh, we had we had a lot of good comments and uh, information. You guys in are way too week. kind on the comments, yeah. though. Yeah, <laughs> it, really, really good comments and good questions coming in this week. Um, I did get a question uh, from Susan, and she says that she is using two different thicknesses of textured glass. One size doesn't fit into the H channel, and she tried to stretch it open, and that didn't help. So what would you suggest? Well, it uh, yeah, it must be a, a pretty heavy-duty texture. And, you know, on the Live Oak Project, we use a lot of textures that way as well. So sometimes what you're going to need to do, Susan, is actually, uh, and I'll have a piece of glass here, is actually turn that piece of glass up on its edge and run it down your grinder like this and eliminate that heavy-duty texture where it needs to fit into the lead. It takes a little bit of time and if you're using the high heart lead, you don't have to take as much off. But if you're just using the regular, uh, you know, lead, you're going to have to lay it up on its edge and almost bevel it, okay, so that it slides into the edge of the channel. And that should, that should you know, solve that problem for you. And thanks again for that question. It's a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. That happens. <clears throat> that you hate to, that to happen right in the middle of your window, but... 
Every once in a while, it, you get that thick yeah, piece of glass. Yeah, and if you stand it up on that edge and, a, and grind that edge down, you'll see that it will fit into your lid. Martha's here. Hi, hey, Martha. Martha. Good, good to, to have you. you. Thank Easy you for Fox. turning in. Yeah, everybody's here tonight, it looks like. Good to see everyone. So if you have a question, just put it in the chat. Um, here's another question. Uh, All right, Barb. Throw it at me. <laughs> I answered some of these earlier today, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of go through them. Um, oh, the grinder bit. They wanted to know when they need... This is a question from Elisa. She wanted to know, how does she know when to change her grinder bit? Okay, Elisa, here we go. So on a on a three-quarter inch, uh, the small you know the small grinder bit for your like whizzling or whiz, whiz grinder... What you, what you want to look at is the thickness is the diamonds from the bottom of, the, of your grinder head to the top. And that's about three quarters of an inch. Now, every time you grind, you only use an eighth of an inch. So that, because that grinder head will slide up and down on that shaft for you, what you, all you need to do is just, uh, I like to start with my grinder head up. And then as I use it and use those diamonds, drop it down just the thickness of your glass because just because you're using the bottom set of the diamonds you're not affecting the top ones so basically with three quarters of an inch you're going to have you should be able to move that grinder head down that shaft six times before you have to buy a 43 dollar grinder head i hope that makes pretty sense cool, right does that make sense yeah just you you have all of those diamonds and you're only using an eighth of an inch on your grinder head so with three quarters of an inch worth of diamonds, you can slide that head either up or down six times. So think and about it. You know that it's you need a new grinder head when you have no more. When you when you've done that six no times, trash it. Yeah. Yeah. It's going and to if you time. use, you know, here's the thing: if you use the 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 right amount of coolant and you keep water in your grinder all the time. What you want to make, if you'll do that, your grinder head will last a very long time. But remember, you've got three quarters of an inch of diamonds on there and you only use an eighth of an inch at a time. And that eighth of an inch will take a long time to wear out as well, as long as the grinder is cooled properly. Um, That's a good question, by the way. Yeah, that is a good question. And some people don't even realize that. Okay, Milo has a question. Do you have any insight into what's happening with the foil supply chain and whatever happened to Edco? You know, I don't, I don't have any insight on it. I did get the word that uh, Venture was stopping their copper foil. I didn't know that Edco had quit producing foil. I'll have to check that out. Um, but you should be able to. Somebody's going to start making it. Now, I I looked Is at it some the copper. I don't I don't know that it's the copper. The co a lot of copper is mined here in this country, so I don't think that's the problem. Well, but you know what? I don't know. Maybe it was made overseas. You know, every, everybody and their brother left this country to go make it cheap. And now they're finding out that we have a, we have a dilemma when we have a problem like we had earlier. Magali said everyone's running out of copper foil. Okay. So, yeah, that could be an issue. Yeah, it could be. I know that, like I said, Venture has ceased to, to reproduce their decorative foils. And, uh, you know, we're probably all going to have to, we're going to have to find some way to, to make it. And I don't know, it's not that because there's no money in it. They're charging $20 of roll for copper foil retail. So there's got to be money in it for the, even for the manufacturer to make it. So I don't know. Mm, we'll have to, we'll have to look into it. I haven't heard anything and, uh, I don't know if it's copper shortage or not. Um, so, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer wanted to know about uh, putting uh, coolant. Well, Diana wanted to know, do you put coolant in the water? And then Jennifer said she didn't see it on her, her instructions. Um, so should she use it? Yeah, well, you should. Um, here's the thing. And for, for your reservoir on your grinder, when it's, uh, you know, where you need to work at it, if you'll take just a, a, a little bit of, in a cap of, um, antifreeze, just a small bit of antifreeze and just a couple drops in that water will keep those diamonds cooler than just sticking it in water and letting it gurgle like that. 
But yeah, you you should make sure that we when you're using your grinder, you should hear that gurgle and you should really be wearing a mask because you are going to get some light glass dust. But if you'll make sure you hear that gurgle, your glasses should be wet enough to where you don't have any dust either. But yes, use some sort of coolant in your water just because it makes the diamonds last longer. Yeah, so that coolant suggestion is for your grinder bit, not so much for your grinder itself. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the grinder because everything's it's enclosed. Yeah, it's just about that bit. That bit is the part that wears out in your grinder kit. And if you'll keep it cool and, you know, if... If you're, when you're using your grinder, if, if white glass dust pops up on the edge of that grinder, you don't have enough water in there. You should never see uh, what I call glass paste on your grinder head. Right, right. Joyce is here. Hi, Joyce. How hey. you doing? Good to see you. Uh, what size copper foil? Um, okay, y'all are asking each other what size copper foil you're using. Do you use copper patina? I do not. <laughs> I do not use copper patina. It's a, it's kind of pink for me, and um, it's just that it's, I, I don't use it. The answer to your question, no. <laughs> we have in the past. Well, we have in the past, yeah. But uh, the the black patina, when I do uh, foil work, I use it. Do we have any black back copper foil? I, I have six rolls, y'all. That's it. Uh, someone wanted it last week, but I don't think we heard yeah. back. Okay. Uh, and it's Edco brand, but I have six rolls of Blackback 732nd. Okay. So you can uh, message Barb if you if you want it, and we'll shoot you over a price with shipping. Okay. Uh, someone had a question about the video that we did the other day on the light box. They were watching that, and they had the question, when you are cutting glass utilizing the light box method, are you aiming for all of your pieces to butt up against the inner border of the pattern, or do you want the pieces to be slightly larger so they overlap the outline? No. You want to make sure that you just cut the glass right up. It, that, that black line on my pattern is the center of my lead. So what you want to do is you want to cut up to the line on each side of each piece of glass. And that center line is your lead line. Basically is your lead line. And if you'll do that, you'll see your window won't grow and it probably won't shrink because you're going to have plus or minuses. But once you, once you are, very, are proficient at cutting the glass, you'll see that everything will just kind of click together for you. And you don't really have to grind a whole lot unless you're not taking the time to cut the glass the way it needs to be to the pattern. Yeah, I think that they were confused because when we laid it on the, at the end of the video, when we laid it on the pattern, it wasn't completely trimmed up yet and it kind of appeared that it was over the edge. Yeah, we're just doing that quick, you know, 43 seconds or whatever yes. it was. So, so yeah. sorry so for any confusion. My, uh, when, when I'm cutting on the light box, the black line is my heart of the lead and I work on either side of that and go from there. Okay. Milo said that uh, that they've had bad results with copper copper patina, so you might want to address the problem they might be having. Yeah, well, here here's the problem that um, the patinas that are made by Novacan, uh, thanks to our our good buddy Pat Co. He uh, the 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 reason the patinas don't work is uh, two reasons. Number one, you're not using 6040 solder on your copper foil. And it's actually required for the patinas to work because they are chemicals that actually tint the tin in the solder. Okay, And if you're not cleaning it correctly, copper foil or black patina, either one of them, clean your piece with baking soda and water thoroughly, rinse it, and then put your patina on and you'll see actually that copper patina will be copper patina instead of pink because you've cleaned it correctly and you've neutralized all of the flux that's on your window. That's the whole problem. Um, if you're not, if you haven't neutralized the flux and everything on your window before you try to patina it, the patina doesn't work correctly. Okay. So that there bacon soda is the key. Bacon soda is like the bomb on your stained glass. It really is. It does the job like you want to believe. It. You'll like it. 
Okay. Right. Thanks again, Pat Co, for that information too. <laughs> uh, Magali wants to know if you can burnish too much. Uh, you can because uh, you can you can actually tear the foil if you're not careful, Magali. So, but yeah, you can burnish too much. But also, you know, you really, unless you just like are watching TV and you're interested in in the new Batman show or whatever that's going on or Schwinguli, uh, yeah, you could over. You could over, <laughs> you could over burnish if you're watching TV. <laughs> Those scary movies. <laughs> Those scary movies. It's Halloween, everybody. Oh gosh, Magali's watching TV. As a matter of fact, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, so Mimi is here, and Larry Mary is here. Kathy Cat has a question. Uh, do you use pattern shears? Why or why not? I don't use pattern shears because I love my razor blade trick, and you can. Look, check that out on the video. It shows you how to put it, how to build one, put it together. I don't like the pattern shears, uh, just because I think that's uh, the manufacturer's way of getting back at us. That do stained glass. Uh, it it doesn't do curves, and unless you stay in the back of the jaw on those uh, pattern shears, whether they're lead or copper foil, unless you stay in the back, you really can't do a whole lot with them. So I prefer to use my two single edge razor blades separated by a piece of cardboard that are the exact width that I need, taped up and I can decorate it with my hand and it's much easier than scissors. And about probably 10 times the speed. Think about that. 10 times faster than cutting it out with pattern shears. Again, I think the pattern shears are just the manufacturer's way of getting back at us. Tom Sharp is here. Tom, hey man, good to see you. I'm so happy you tuned in tonight. Yeah, good to see you, Tom. Okay, uh, do you, uh, here's a question that came in from Team Viral. Do you need a grinder to make stained glass or is it depending on the design? You know, everyone should at least have one grinder in their arsenal, okay? You really should have a grinder. You can grind it, and we show you in the video, there's several different ways that you can go at glass and do the edges differently, but there's four different ways that you can do it. But the number one way, I think, would be to find a grinder. Now, you can find these at yard sales. You can find them used and everything. And uh, so a lot of times you can find a grinder for, say, 50 or $60, and you may have to buy a grinder head, but you're not spending two or three hundred dollars. Now, my suggestion is if if the budget allows it, get a new grinder, and it will last you the entire rest of basically the rest of your life as long as you're doing stained glass because they don't wear out, y'all. I've got grinders in the stained glass room that we've had since the beginning, and they still work. So you have to think about that, right, Barn? That's right. So the investment is, it's a good investment. It's like your, it's like your hand tools. If you invest in good hand tools, you'll never have to buy them again. And if you use your hand tools for what they're meant to you be used for, you definitely won't ever have to buy them again. That's right. Okay. Um, so Milo said that she used baking soda and flux on a piece that uh, and it left a residue on her zinc. Um, I don't think we recommend it. We for don't zinc. recommend it on on zinc. Yeah. Yeah. Not recommended for zinc. Yeah, and it, well, why don't why you if you're gonna if you're gonna use uh, zinc and and make it uh, and use copper patina, my suggestion would be to just use brass no, caming and not worry about it. it. I, I don't oh, okay. Well, they you, were cleaning it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you know, you don't... It's clean it for Baking fun. soda, you can probably clean the window with baking soda, but patina, patining zinc, zinc isn't designed to be completely patinated, I'm sorry, unless you want to tin the whole thing with solder, and then it'll do it. Yeah, so that's a suggestion for when you're doing uh, the copper foil method, right. and you're using solder, 60-40 solder. Yeah, you have to use the 60-40 because the chemicals in the patinas are designed to t to color the tin that's in the solder. And if the flux isn't gone off of it, it's not going to work. Right. So it looks like Ray found some 732nd foil in it. Yeah, I think it's on our, is it it's on, on our, our page? It's on our Amazon page. Yeah, and if they got Amazon it, y'all, here's story. the deal. I know it's expensive, but if you got a little bit of money in your budget, 
Number one, you need to make it worth the freight charges because it's a minimum. Sunshine has it. Uh, Sunshine's minimum shipping is $8.99. That's a lot of stuff you can get into a small U.S. Postal Service square box. I think you can get a lot of foil in that. So give Sunshine a crawl, call. Tech, check out our our store our storefront on YouTube. I and mean, I'm sure Sunshine has it. Yeah, that's what I said. Check oh, okay. out Sunshine. That's right. Sorry. Or we, we may I'm have it on our store up. if it's not out. But, you know, if I got, I would say go ahead and get it all you can. I've got some containers I need to go through because I think I have a, a lot of copper foil in the, uh, in the studio. So a lot of great questions coming in tonight. And let's see, the next one was Brandon. What do you suggest using to trace a pattern on dark glass when a Sharpie won't work? Oh, well. A white paint pen. Yeah, a white paint pen or a silver paint pen or a gold paint pen. Barb and I keep all three on our work surfaces in the studio. And a lot of times we'll find that, yeah, that's we need that. We absolutely need that, especially on uh, some glasses that we're using right now. We just did some some glasses on a uh, transom with some seashells and a sea turtle and some other stuff like that. So, yeah, and we found ourselves looking and using the white paint pen, didn't we, Barb? Oh, yeah, white paint pen. White Always paint works pen works right. good. And, you know, they have one that's fine, and they have one that's a little, a little heavy duty. So you can use either one, really. I prefer the... The heavier one puts a wider line, gives me a little bit to work with. Yeah, and they dry up quick, so make sure that you, you know, put, put it the in lid a baggie. On it. <laughs> put the lid on it, and I like to keep it in a baggie. Yeah. Keep it fresh. Um, Tom says he's got four grinders. <laughs> one for everything you have one to do. One for everything. Big, big Tom, I've got a grinder big. here that I haven't even put together yet, and I need to do that, but we're saving that. We're going to put it together for y'all. Magali's husband is lending her money for a foil. Tom Sharp says 3M spray adhesive, cut the pattern, stick it on the glass. That is a great idea. You can put the pattern under the glass or you can put the pattern on the glass. The other thing, I, I like the paint pens just because I can, you know, take some lacquer thinner and wipe it off. And I try to use things that I, I have, you know, ready available in the studio for cleanup. So I use a product that's easy to clean up, too, by having everything in the studio. So. Larry Mary says, uh, mark the dark glass with uh, electric or carbide engraving pencil. That's cool. That's if you, pattern. yeah, if you can trace your pattern over uh, by an electric or engraving pencil, that's a great way to do it, too. And I have had some cuts before where I'd taken, uh, you know, taken and scored the glass and then just ground up to it when I was had to go in a little bit deeper than normal and maybe I needed to use the uh, the quarter inch uh, drill, uh, bit on my grinder too so so I like our new system that's coming up tonight every time you guys have a question it pops up green it lets Barbara know that it's a question so it's really neat and uh, we love really? it Really? Yeah. I didn't see that. You haven't been noticing that? I just no. caught it a minute ago. Okay. So if um, you have a question, it's green. We're go. Okay. Um, we have, let's see. I did have a question. Someone wanted to know, do we ever wear special gloves so we don't cut ourselves? Uh, I put some on the website actually today on the Amazon store. So they're, they're cut-proof gloves, y'all. I wear gloves when I'm uh, in the back and I'm handling big glass <clears throat> because my my hands aren't as rough as they used to be years ago. So uh, so I wanted to just, I, I wear gloves in the back. I don't wear gloves when I'm cutting glass up front and I don't wear gloves when I'm fabricating. What I don't do is smoke anymore and I don't eat or drink while I'm fabricating and working with lead or solder, so. Uh, See that? See the green? No, that's members. Those are members. Oh, okay. Those are members. All right. And Ray's got uh, his wrench out. And Thumbs Ray's up to Ray, the, everybody. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for what you Our do, my friend. members are very active, yes. Uh, Ray says he uses a silver paint pen, and he's got the description of what he does. That's very interesting how you keep that on there. He uses a little bit of chapstick, so when he uses the grinder with water, it won't wash off. The lime won't wash off. That's cool. That's cool. So you cover so it, you put the, the line on it, and then you put, oh yeah, and then the ring saw. 
Because the ring saw will pull that mark off. Yeah, yeah. it sure will. Yeah. It sure will. And in the past, when I've used a, a, a saw, I, I have just scored the piece and uh, just followed the score line. Jennifer, uh, that's why she's green. She's I see it. I'm sorry, Jennifer. Jennifer. Uh, but thanks for being a member, hon. We appreciate it. She said she looks forward to hearing our thoughts on our new grinder. From the video, she thinks it's the same one she has. Yes, it is. It's the grinder, and it's still in the box. We have not opened it because we haven't had a ch chance to do a, a box opening. Yeah, and it needs to, you know, when you do something like that and you introduce a new tool, uh, it, you really we really need to do it right. So we're just kind of uh, waiting uh, waiting on me, apparently. <laughs> He's been really it's busy. It's really busy right we now. We have a new video coming out this week. It'll be out on Thursday, and it's called the 10 Top Tips for, for Stained sol Glass Soldering. So it's I hope we good. covered everything for y'all. And I think you'll like the last tip, and um, so you have to stay tuned towards the end. Yeah, please watch the video start <laughs> to finish. We're only going to take up approximately 14 minutes of your life. No, it's about 20, 20 uh Oh, 20-some minutes. Some minutes. It's a long one. Well, we you know what? We'd we love to have, have you watch it. it. I'm trying to put some fun in it so y'all will watch it. And we did have fun making it, that's for sure. So... Yeah, yeah, so we did have fun. We did have fun making that video. I thought, I thought we had fun making. it. And yeah. you know what? Barbara tells me that I'm getting a little better at making videos because it doesn't take her as long to edit all that stuff out of there. Yeah, he does good. <laughs> I don't have to edit very much anymore. That's really good. Um, let's see. Translation from Egypt to greetings to you from Egypt. I enjoy following along with you. That. Thank you, Ray, for in interpreting that because I had thank no you, idea. Thank you, Ray. I, I, I saw the hieroglyphics and I thought it was Egyptian, but thank you for tuning that in, turning that in to something that we could understand. It's greatly appreciated. Jennifer says she likes long videos. Martha said uh, vellum is really good for making patterns. I wondered about that. I wondered about that. Yeah. Well, you know, we cover our patterns um, that we use copper foil where we cut them out and everything. We cover them in... Uh, on both sides with clear contact paper mm -hmm. and it makes them pretty rigid you know right right but I like the I so like welcome. the chapstick idea <laughs> I'm sorry <Go> ahead. <laughs> well, I was just thinking about that that's pretty cool welcome the Egypt is uh, the viewer from Egypt welcome yeah welcome and, uh, thank you for we tuning have people in from all over the world to tune in we did have a viewer that was in uh, the UK and they uh, said they were going to catch the live tomorrow. Tomorrow, because they were on their way to bed. <laughs> <laughs> they were on their way to bed, so. Uh, okay, Ephraim is here tonight. Uh, if you are stacking two pieces of glass, could you put some kind of sealant inside to stop the humidity when washing? Ephraim, hey man, it's good to see you, sir. Glad you all uh, look forward to the next trip to Myrtle Beach and you guys stop by and see us. So what you do is you take those two pieces of glass and you clean them really well, put them together, and then you foil around them. Okay, foil around those two pieces. Foil the two pieces of glass together. It's been done with flowers and everything in between the glasses. You know, you can put f flowers or whatever. But if you'll uh, copper foil tape those together, you won't have a humidity problem. And what size tape would they need? Yeah, for that, that you're going to need to use probably a quarter, oh, a yeah. quarter inch tape, or maybe five sixteenths, Ephraim. So you want to you want to uh, make sure that uh, you use a foil large enough that you can do the two pieces together. Okay. So I hope that helps you, Ephraim. By the way, sir, thank you for your service. And. Uh, so our friend from Egypt, his name is Mustafa. Mustafa. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi. Thanks okay. for tuning in. Okay. I had a question about a soldering iron. Uh, Nancy wanted to know if uh, her soldering iron is 80 watt, and she does have a rheostat. So does she turn the rheostat down? She was just wondering. No. Hey, that's a good question okay. because... Because uh, uh, most people don't even know what the wattage in a soldering iron means. The wattage in the soldering iron means how fast it will recuperate its heat after, while you're using it. So if you go tsh, 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 and it cools off a little bit, that 80 watt iron, I work, 
My favorite iron that I use, y'all, is 80 watts. Okay? I put my side, my rheostat on number eight, and that's where I solder uh, my copper foil and my lead. And, and at number eight, my 80 watt soldering iron is a perfect 510 degrees. So thank you for using a rheostat. Your work will thank you. And your soldering iron, just, just because it's 80 watt, all that means is it takes a tiny bit longer for it to recuperate the heat after you have pulled it out of the tip. Not very long at all, but it is a little bit different as opposed to a 100 watt iron. It's a great question. Those of you that have rheostats or, and or 80 watt irons, you're good. Just work, I work, Ed works his 80 watt iron on number eight and I'm happy and nothing's melting but the solder. Right, so you wanna do your own test with your own equipment in your own studio. And you know, Ed has shown how to do that test before, how to, um, Make sure your solder melts and not your project. And yeah, not your project. And because, you know, working too hot, we all know what happens. We all went over, we went over that last week. We all know what happens when you work too hot is the foil, the sticky on the back of the foil lifts up. So. Okay. So that's good. I, I, that was a really good question, y'all. And thank you for bringing it up. We appreciate it. Hi, Pauline. I'm glad you could make it. Me, Mike Pike. Uh, <laughs> Me, Mike P., uh, had to step away for a minute, but he wanted to know uh, about baking soda. Do you make a paste and apply it wet um, or wet the piece and apply it? I, what I did is I, I put a, a couple tablespoons in a bowl and then I put maybe a half a cup of water and I mixed it up and I washed the window with that and a sponge. And he shows that in the stained glass uh, video, the the, leaf. the last long one that we did with the leaf. Yeah. So it was uh, maybe it was kind of like a paste, but uh, me, Mike, I don't think that it was like a like a you know like a sticky paste. You know, it was more a half a cup of water and two tablespoons of baking soda and whatever that made up. You can kind of judge it from that mixture, but that's what I use. I don't think I'm, you can go wrong either. No, way. I don't think I mean, so either. You know, you can't add too much or too little. No, because add too little, but you can't add. Too the baking soda neutralizes the acid, just like Tums neutralizes the acid when you get heartburn. So if you think about that, and man, let me tell you, me Mike, when I after I cleaned that piece of that leaf, and I with that baking soda, I could not believe how clean it was in my hands. I, mean, I could not believe it. It's just incredibly clean and it works really, really wonderful. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Seems like everybody out there is doing good tonight. Are you ready for a, um, a glass chat? A glass chat? You want to do a glass chat? Yeah, now? let's do a glass chat. Okay. Okay. So, hey, while I'm doing the glass chat, I have a question though. Can I ask everybody a question? Sure. Those of you... I don't know how many of you are out there that do this, but I was wondering how many of you in your studio not only do stained glass, but do fusing. So right, just, yeah. Yeah, so just let us know how many of you do fusing. And uh, and actually, if you if you do fusing and if you like 90, just punch 90. If you if you like 96, just punch 96. We're curious about what... What? Who's using what and where? Who's fusing? Yes. Who's fusing and using? That's what we need to know. So my glass tonight. Judith Weiss is here. Hey, Judith. So I'm going to share this glass that we're going to share with you tonight is a Euroboros. It's a number sixty-six. Okay. And I want to. I want to say that this glass. Reminds me. Do you want me to put the close up or are you going to show it on the regular camera? I'm going to show it up okay. here because okay. uh, flip the backlight to white. It, never mind, it's there. it's there. Okay, I'm going to show this to you. I just have to get up, have to maneuver a little bit because there's a couple cords here and I don't want to. This is number 66, you're a burrow show. Oh. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Perfectly. Yes, it's perfect. Uh, can you see that? Mm hmm What is this? This is a number 66. Your bearers? Your bearers. I'm going to set it right here. Let's see how that looks. 
Oh, yeah. So I call this like, it's kind of like a bubble gum glass to me. The colors in it are just really, really intense. And uh, I'm going to have Barb switch over to the number two camera for us. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I can do that. There you go. Okay. And what would you use that for? I would, I don't know, but it's going in the, in the marsh windows that we're doing for our big project. This is going to be probably, I'm guessing it's going to be a reflection of a sunset coming off of the side of a boat, is what I'm guessing. Part of this is going to be a reflection. Y'all, this glass is so beautiful, it makes me want to tear up and cry. I kind of hate to cut it, but I'm going to, and you'll see it I when I get ready. I bet you it's beautiful in the light. It is. It is. It is. It is. Okay. But it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's right there. Okay. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So our glass chat, that's kind of cool. So now we're going to we're gonna do a little bit of talking. Um, okay. Go ahead. Do you have another Real, question? Yeah, I just had a question. I want to go ahead and get it answered so I don't lose it here when we get started on some other things. Okay. Uh, Mary wanted to know, she uses a 96. She wanted to know uh, for her kiln, uh, top fired or side? I would prefer, if you're going to do fusing, you really should use a top fire because it heats the glass evenly and you get a much better project, I think. Yes. And make sure you always use spray A or some sort of de-vitrification spray so that you don't get that, you know, that burn look or that flat, musty look on the edge of your glass. Hazy look, but... Hazy, now with yeah, bullseye, not musty, hazy. <laughs> <laughs> with bullseye... You don't have to worry about that. No, right? with bullseye, you don't have to worry about that. And you don't have to worry about that with uh, your Burroughs, but their your Burroughs, I think, is 90. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You'll have to just do a test. So we're going to switch over here to this uh, number two camera, Barb. Okay. And I'm going to make sure my hands are where they need to be. There we go. Okay. So y'all can see these, these two little handles sticking out right here. But first of all, I'm going to show you... A 200 watt iron made in the 1960s, okay? We think. This is a, yeah, it is. This is okay. a, it's two, it's 200 watts made made in Chicago, okay? Look at that cord. You want to plug that in today with 200 watts and probably catch fire. <laughs> So anyway, that's an, one of my old soldering irons. Now, I, I talked with our good friend uh, Derek over in the UK and sent him some photographs of these irons. And he's talking about, he sent me back a photograph of a reproduction, what they call a dividing iron, what they call a dividing iron in the medieval times. A dividing iron was they would score the glass and then they would take this iron that was hot and touch the score, similar to the way we break wine bottles today with hot water, and that score would run itself out. It does work, but today in today's day and time, we don't have time for all that. But I wanted to show you this. Now, these, those are that's a medieval iron, okay? Now, what I wanted to show you, like I promised this week, and I would bring these in, okay? So these irons here, are at least a hundred years old and maybe even more. They are hand they are handmade for a specific use, but these are solid copper tips. And you can see the solder is still on this tip right here. Okay. Now this one weighs about three pounds, and you can see the split in the handle that was done by whoever made this, and then that copper was beat around these prompts that go inside the copper. Now this is the granddaddy. I'm gonna show you this granddaddy right here now. This is my granddaddy. The copper tip, y'all look at, this is my hand. Look how big that copper tip is, okay? And from the back, from my wrist to the tip of my finger is about eight and a half inches. So you can see this copper point is very, very large. And it weighs, <laughs> it weighs about, 
I would say weighs 10 pounds. But I want you to look at this. This was a craftsman who made this solid copper. He twisted the steel that goes into the copper. And again, we they used prongs to go in to hold the copper. I ground this off a little bit just so that you could see that, yes, it is solid copper, y'all. It's still got solder on it right there. Now, these irons would have been heated up in a fire, heated up in what they called a blast, a little blast furnace. They were taken in on the jobs. They were in stained glass studios. You know, it seems like to me the heavier they were, you they would wear you out. Okay, Tom says that... Uh they used them on copper roof. It's very possible. See, the, the copper smiths would be using them on copper roofs. They would have they would have had that little, you know, I don't know. And I don't, these were given to me, and I was told that they were really old. And I'm and having Derek look at them over in the UK. They're very old, and he gave, they are very old, but he gave me the name of a museum to contact. And I'm also going to take these and send a photograph to the Corning Museum Library because I'm sure they have some information on that. These are just very old tools that were heated differently rather than electricity. And I'm sure they did as good or better of a job than a soldering iron right now. So think about that. If you could imagine having to wait for this, this to cool down. But listen, they're just soft as they can be. They're solid copper, you know. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. It's, it's nice to see how things used to be done. And we're really, you know, I, I'm lucky, I think, to have these in my tool collection. Yeah. You know, I have some, uh, some blow pipes that are from Stuban Glass that are, uh, years that are 100 old. years old as well. So. Yeah, show and tell, super cool. Uh, Julie Graves wanted to know if we could show uh, cutting of wine bottles. Wow. We, you want us to show you how hard it is? You want to show you how difficult that is? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they make a $79 wine bottle cutter. And, and if you watch the videos uh, online, it's, it's okay. But let me tell you something about cutting wine bottles, y'all. It is a thankless job. And it's, it's, it's not easy. It is not easy. And it's like... It's like they told me when we started blowing glass. If you'll make a hundred of them, you'll get good at it. Yeah. So think about that. Yeah. And you, Sorry. so you, and you do, you want to do a hundred so that you can get good. But the main thing is you want to get proficient enough that it doesn't take you forever to do it. Yeah. And because there are a lot curve. of interesting bottles out there. Yeah. It's and it is a learning curve. But yeah, like Barbara said, you know, we have people come in wanting us to cut bottles down for them all the time. We just, we can't do it. We anymore. just can't do that stuff. You know? it, we just don't have enough time, and uh, it and it's not it's it's not cost efficient for the customer. Yeah, so we usually just tell the customer, you know, we we can sell you a wine bottle cutter, and then you could cut as many bottles as you want as you like. Because it's, I mean, if you practice, it's not hard, and right. you can teach yourself. Right. But we just don't have the time and the, in our. The bottle cutters to today are much nicer than the Ronco bottle cutter back in the '60s and '70s. You know, Ronco, he had everything to do everything with, but his bottle cutter, where you scored it and tapped it and it came off. Let me tell you, it only happens in the movies, y'all. Uh, Cole wants to know what's the oldest tool you have and still use. The oldest tool that I have and still use is this one right here. Probably, right? Probably. This was my father's. This is my father's stick rule. And you know what, y'all? It even has the slide on it. It even has the slide. So I, I will tell you this. If you want to measure something accurately, the stick rule is still the best one to use for accurate measurements. It will not let you down. It's only, it's 72 inches plus six, which means it's 78 inches. And this is the oldest tool in my arsenal that I still use all the time. So, yeah, you used it. it today during a short. Yeah, during a short. And it, you know, I'm, you know what? It's probably not the oldest. It's not a hundred years old, but this was my father's, and I'm not sure where he got it. What do you have that's 100 years old that you use? 
I don't. That's what I mean. I don't oh. have anything that's a hundred year old that I use. Oh, okay. Because I, I used to use my hundred year old blowpipes, but you know they're steel, so they get hot. They're not like my nice <laughs> stainless steel blowpipes. But this is my favorite piece of old toolage that I have right here. My stick roll. Lufkin. Yep. Yep. Um, let's see. We had another question come in. Oh. Thank you, Thomas. You know it is, right? Andrea says uh, they're getting back into stained glass after 13 years. They started a piece back then. The solder has oxidized. How do they get going again? I would, if after all that time, I would take it apart, mm -hmm. strip the foil off of it, and start from square one, hon, please. Yeah, there's no, there's no save. You'll be so frustrated by the time you get done with that, you won't want to start stained glass again. What I would do is take it all apart, you know, just start pulling it apart, pull the foil off of it, clean it up really nice with alcohol and lacquer thinner, and refoil it and start the process over. And you know what? It'll be a great learning experience for you because all of those memories that you had of doing stained glass are going to come back once you start doing that. And that is a good question. <clears throat> yeah, that is. So do you want to do a, a cutting demo? Are you ready for that? Yeah, we can. We can. Someone wanted to know what people are using cut wine bottles for. Um, I saw a really nice candle um, and they had it in a recycled wine bottle that seems like a good use it was really packaged nice that would be one use some people make drinking glasses out of them you have to sand the top real well uh, yeah bases. you do and you go the problem with the cutting the bottles is you get what what are called oysters or chips you know the chips that you have in the top of your good crystal in the china cabinet that you can't use anymore you get those chips everywhere if you're not careful so the whole idea is to score that bottle get the water screaming hot coming out of the sink and just run it underneath of it and turn it and it, it's supposed to pop off. But I promise you it doesn't happen like that. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, okay. it is. Uh, it's really tough. So tonight, y'all, and be we're not switching to the other camera yet because all right, I, you guys go my ahead goal talk. is to talk to you and then I'm going to show you just... You just tell me when. Just tell me when. Ray! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's not going to rescue you. I know, I, I know. Ray, help. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I have a lot of questions about, well, we had a really nice comment today about uh, listening to the glass. And a, a customer, well, and a subscriber to our channel said that many, many, many years ago, her instructor told her to that she should listen to her glass and it'll tell her what's going on and she let barb and i in on that and she, the, and she said she thought her doctor was a little bit loopy when he told her yeah that. she thought her he her, said when you hear the glass when you hear the glass then you'll know so she thought he was like talking smack <laughs> but then trash. When, yeah trash <laughs> but then when she heard me talk about listen to your glass cutter she got it it she was like, wow, he really was being truthful. So what I've done tonight is is I just have a very small piece of Euroboros number two. Uh, we had a sheet that got cracked and I needed to split it. And you'll see that in a short, I split it. But I, wanna, I want you, again, I just want you to listen to my glass cutter. And then we're going to break this piece of glass. Now Euroboros, you know, and Yakagani, they're all v difficult glasses to cut. But you don't, you don't change the pressure of your glass cutter to cut them. And I want you to see, because I'm going to turn this up on its edge and give the camera time to focus, but I want you to see how Can the I colors are stacked it? up in this glass. And Barb, yes. <laughs> Number two, babe. Okay, so the camera is focusing on that. And on the edge of that glass, you see blue, you see black, you see green, you see red. All of those colors are stacked up in the glass by the way that it's made. And the only soft color in this whole line here is the blue. The soft color by meaning you'll hear your glass cutter. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a, a simple strip for you. But I want you to listen, even though you're not going to hear anything. So here we go. And it may, you know, it's just it's just me and I'm just like you. So this may work or it may not. So here we go. Listen. All right, so, so we did that, and as my cutter was running across the surface of this glass, you heard it, it was driving up and down, and it was going over and under and falling into potholes and everything else. So we wanted, let's try this again. You, you can see that, right? Let me see, there we go, okay. So we're gonna try and split this but I want you to listen. I'm not I'm not changing the pressure. I cut with this same pressure all the time. And I don't know, but that last little bit going across, that was the blue. Okay. So I want you to see how beautiful this glass is. As well as I want you to switch cameras, bar. Please. I want you to not just because it says you're a Burroughs and it costs a lot of money or just because it says bullseye and it costs a lot of money and it's got a goofy texture on it. Please don't be afraid to cut this type of glass. This glass will change your work just by, again, being very simple piece of glass. But if you learn how to cut it and not be afraid of it, your work will change and you'll feel so much more comfortable using a very unique glass in your work. So this is Ed. I'm here for a glass demo explaining to you about your Burroughs glass and don't be afraid to cut it. You know why? Because you can do it. Okay, did you cut it on the front or the back? I cut it on the front, which is the smooth side because the other side is way way too textured that's the back this is the front it's smooth okay but if remember if i want the back side up in my pattern just turn my pattern over that's all cut the glass on the smooth side just turn your pattern over and it'll be upside down when you finish it magali wants to know why her shoulders go up when she scores her glass your shoulders are not up that might be because he's sitting down. i'm sitting down magali if i was standing up my shoulder would pop up yes <laughs> but That's I'm sitting why. down and he doesn't normally cut I don't glass I don't cut sitting. glass sitting down I don't recommend it uh, you need to be in control and sitting down you're not in control so but yeah hey my golly my shoulder lifts up too high because I have to get comfortable to do it okay that's great. Thank you all for tuning in for that. And again, that's a Euroboros what is that? Oh, number okay. two. Euroboros number two. Okay. Yeah. That. That's Euroboros number two. I don't. You we know, don't know if they still make it, but they probably make something. No, because similar. let me tell you all, this this the label I took off the glass says ten three ninety seven. Y'all, that sheet of glass was made in nineteen ninety seven. <laughs> I don't know if they still make it or not, but I got a sheet of it and I love it. Actually, I have two sheets of it because they were there and I got them. So. Okay, if you have any uh, questions, just put them in the chat. We have a few more minutes and we'd be happy sure we to do. answer them. And do sure you have anything do. else you'd like to share tonight? Um, I do want to remind no. you all that uh, we are putting out a new video this week. It'll come out we on are. Thursday. Um, so. And it's going to be your top 10 best soldering tips for soldering stained glass. Yeah. Is that the name of it or did I blow it's that out of like water? It's something like that. It's something like that. It's close, but it's you, you're close. top 10 soldering tips. And you know what? Those of you that, that really got the soldering down pat, it's just a little refresher course for you. But those of you that haven't, are still getting frustrated from your soldering, I'm showing you two different ways to solder in this video. One way is going to just eliminate the frustration for you. And the other way is, is just a little bit later down the road when you eliminate all that frustration. 
What's that? What are you talking about? My two about? solder, my two oh. really good soldering tips out of the top 10. But yeah. you know what? Everything has to coincide. Everything goes together. Everything goes together. It's Start not. Start to finish. It's not one thing. It's not two. It's 10. Yeah. Got to follow those steps all the way through. Yeah. What is it? Um, okay. Mark Mason, uh, he wanted to know. Hey, Mark. Uh, should he set his iron on eight? It, it depends on your iron. Test your iron. The only difference is 100 watt is going to recover heat quicker. Yes. Yes, that's it. The only difference is that 100 watt iron is going to recover heat like boom as, a, as opposed to boom. Yeah. So leave it on eight. Check it. If you have a thermal couple mark, that would be great. But I, the, the, a simple test that you can do is just a piece of lead and a piece of 60-40 solder or 50-50. And if you don't use lead, then all you have to really worry about is... is the one. Yeah. Is your uh, is your iron hot enough to run that bead? And the, the color of your tip, Mark... Not to, and Well, you know what? Not just Mark. Everybody. The color of your tip should be a pretty pale silver gold... And very light blue. It shouldn't be black. It shouldn't be black and it shouldn't be cobalt blue. It shouldn't be midnight blue. And it shouldn't have black stuff all over it. It shouldn't have any of that. If your tip is the right temperature to work with, it stays that pretty blue silver color. Uh, just like a, almost like an iridescent. Right, Barb? Iridescent on your soldering tip. A iridescent blue. Mm-hmm. And she's going to show you that in that soldering video. So please make sure you tune in. Uh, uh, someone said uh, around 550. Now that's what Milo, that's what he works at is 550. 510, so yeah. De depending on, you know, your own iron. And depending yeah. on where you're working at, what the humidity is. You know, we're in South Carolina. We got a lot of humidity. If the air conditioner comes on while I'm working, I may need to tune it up a little bit. But I, And I always have a ceiling fan running behind me. So, you know, sometimes I have to adjust for that. If it's uh, cold outside, you know, we allow the glass blowing furnace to heat our building for us in the wintertime. So if it's a little chilly outside, I may still may have to turn my iron up just a little bit. But I want to be able to work at a, at a certain speed that I'm comfortable at. So that temperature will dictate to you how fast or slow that you want to work. That's all. And again, it's just 80 <coughs> watts versus 100 watts versus 200 watts is how fast your iron will recuperate the heat while you're using it. Uh, Magali uh, went to collision centers to try to find a sandblaster. No go on that. But uh, Cat St. Jane said go to a monument company. Yes, go to a monument yeah, company. Yeah, go to a monument company, uh, Magali. And, um, I, yeah, that's going to be your best bet. I yeah. mean, I don't know. I, that's who we've used in the past. Yeah, oh, in the past until we got our own sandblaster. But Magali, you know, um, talk to hubby. You can get a siphon-fed sandblaster thing on our website for about $23, and it won't make a mess. And you, I'm sure your husband probably has a compressor there at the house because you, you only need like 35 pounds of pressure to run a siphon-fed uh, sandblaster, Magali. Check it out on our page. It's there. What's that? This little siphon fed gun, sandblasting gun. It's about twenty three dollars. It's on uh, okay. I don't know that it's on the web page right now, but I can. Uh, I thought we had put it on there because we, we had a had, couple different sandblasters. But we changed it, and now we're in the Amazon store. Okay, so we'll put it. But check it, check it out, or we'll put it on our on our Amazon store. And uh, but you know what tonight. We want to thank Sunshine for being a sponsor of our show. And we want to thank them for everything that they do throughout the week for us and throughout the month. Thank you guys very much. Y'all don't forget, Sunshine has 1,500 different colors of stained glass. Yeah, Magali says she's just going to do the acid etch. Yeah, that might be easier, Magali. That might yeah, be easier. just you know, be careful. Make sure you wear eye protection on the acid etch. And definitely you want to wear gloves. Okay. That's some nasty stuff. <laughs> it is. Okay, do we have any more questions or discussions or 
complaints or anything. <laughs> I hope that we're giving you all some good information tonight. It's Joan said thank you. It's wonderful to see everybody, and thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. It's uh, I know it takes a little bit of time out of your Monday night, but you know what? We really appreciate it because we're not here because of us. We're here for you. Kathy Cat said she is back in glass after three years, and she had to add oil to her cutter, and it worked like a charm. Thanks a zillion. Oh, you're welcome. And, you know, don't don't forget to clean that little area out be, behind the wheel inside the cutter head. Just use your straight pin, get all that gunk out of there, and you're on go, girl. I'm glad that worked for you. Thank you. You know, all the, the comments that you give us for the information that we give you not only makes us feel good, but it helps everyone else in our community. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you, everyone. We really appreciate all your input and all your great comments and your questions and your inspiration. You inspire us every Monday to keep doing this. Oh, well, thank Coming you. Back every Blessings every, to you back in Mississippi, too. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Every week. Okay, so do we have any more questions? I'll just wait. We'll just hang out. You know, we are very happy. And I tell you what, Barb, I don't know about you, but... The only way we're going to get 500 more subscribers is if you push that button right there and we ask these people to subscribe to our channel. Oh, subscribe. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. I think most of them do subscribe. They have, but if they haven't, please do so. And you know what? When you subscribe, you're going to help us meet that 10,000 subscriber goal. And then be sure to push that notification bell up at the top so that... You're notified when we have a live video and we're coming live to you on Monday nights at 7 o'clock. It's not just a sometime, it's every time. Thank you all for tuning every in on Mondays. Monday. Every Monday at 7. That's what we do. That's who we are. That's who we are and how we roll and we're excited. Okay. Uh, oh, Kat St. James says her husband knows he gets frozen pizza on Monday. Thank you, guys. That is so sweet. You know what? That's Tell your husband we said thank you. Um, Jennifer Enlow wants to know how can she tell if she has pulled the lead cane hard enough before using it? Here's the thing, Jennifer. What you want to do is that lead cane should only stretch about three or four inches, and that's plenty of stretch. You'll just see it straighten out. And yeah. It'll when strong. you pull it, if you have a lead vise, it'll get strong. And if you've, if you've pulled it enough, which is about three or four inches, you can hold it up in between your two fingers like that and it'll still lay out straight. Because when you're stretching it, you're just activating the molecules in it and the lead becomes so much more rigid. It's incredible. It becomes a lot stronger. A good question, Jennifer. Jennifer, Thank yeah, you. just like three or four inches and you're good. Yep. Okay. And if you're using that lead stretcher, that, that thing is really a sweet piece of equipment. You know, yeah. we used to use two pair of pliers. Thank uh -huh. you, Too Late. Thank you. Appreciate Tule it. Tule Studios. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Uh-oh. We got that light going. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Artie. <laughs> Happy birthday to Artie RV tonight, y'all. Two years old, and we never would have thought we'd come this far. No, we would have never but thought. But without y'all. Two years ago, we would have never thought we were doing a live stream. Yeah, but without y'all, uh, we wouldn't be here. So. Thank you, guys. And uh, thank you, Thule Studios. That's awesome. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in tonight. And uh, Have any more questions, Barb? I don't see any more questions. Any, any questions? Any problems? Well, I hope there's no problems because I can't cure those. <laughs> Come on, Ed. Come on, Ed. Okay. So anyway, our, uh, I want to just give a big shout out to everybody that's watching tonight. And I want to give a big shout out to my grandson who's been a dream helping us get all of our equipment plugged in and put together and running the way it's supposed to. So thank you, Taylor, for that. It's greatly yes, appreciated. Yes, we appreciate that, sir. Um, Milo wants to know, have we, have we finished the oak tree? Yes, we have, and the videos are online. The videos so are online. So you're welcome to watch every one of them. Yeah, and a, a really good picture of the oak tree is when you go to our website at conwayglass.com. It's right there. Nina, if you want to uh, ask us a question, go right ahead or come back next week and bring your questions. Yeah, don't worry about it, hon. Uh, if, if you're a new person doing stained glass or 
you know, you've been doing it for a long time, like Ray and so many other of our viewers, no questions are bad questions. And so don't be embarrassed about asking any questions. If it's something that Barb and I can't help you with, the rest of our community will chime in and help you out. I yep, promise. They've you. all been in the same shoes as, as yeah. you. So please ask your question, Nina. Uh, Ray wants to know what's for supper. I don't know, but you know, chicken bog. Oh yeah, that's right. Barbara made chicken bog the other yesterday, y'all. And if you don't know what chicken bog is, it's kind of it's uh it's chicken and sausage and rice and uh, a lot of time up north people make it using squirrel and rabbit. It's it's called they call it a perlo. Okay, but that's not chicken bog. No, but that's not chicken bog. Chicken bog <laughs> is something that Barbara makes, and they actually have a huge festival here in South Carolina about chicken bog. And it's really good. I think it's next week. And uh, yeah, I believe the chicken bog, the oh the bog. Izzy, off. I'm sorry, I missed your question. I apologize. How big can you make a copper foil piece in a wooden frame? Well, in a, if you're going to put it in a wooden frame, it's going to be quite rigid all the time. So uh, you know, three by four maybe if you want. The thing, what you have to remember though is. Is it's not how big can I make it? It's how big can I handle it? How big is it going to be? Can it be for me to be able to flip it up, flip it over, and you know be in charge of that window instead of it being in charge of me? So I would say typically we before you start stacking windows are uh, three by three. So uh, copper foil window, I would say three two by three is a safe size. Three by four is okay, but you got to have a big table and you and you got to have a lot of strength to flip that over. So. Yeah, yeah. So you have a lot of things to consider when you're building big. Yeah, but the frame the frame part of it will hold it rigid and and make sure that it won't come apart. So just keep that in mind. But I, you know, I I would uh, thirty two by forty two, maybe about nine and a half square feet. So, do you have a story time tonight? Do you have story? a story? A story time tonight? I don't know if I have a story tonight or not. Daniel uh, wants... Go ahead. I'll let you think on that a minute. Daniel wants to know... Uh, he would like to buy a kiln. Any recommendations? Uh, we have some on our... On our yeah, uh, we have a top fire kiln that's a 16-inch on, on, our our, Amazon on our Amazon store. store. On our Amazon store. Right. And you can get to that right at our uh, RDRV page. So you can, you can check that out. And it, you're going to find every everything is really um, comparable in pricing, one or two dollars here or there. Um, you know, what you have to look at is, is shipping. But I recommend a top fire kiln. Most of your kilns are going to be programmable. The ones we have on our, on our, on our store are... Now, the small are, kilns, though, are they top fired? Some of them are, yeah. But, but some, some of them, them are aren't. side fire. Go some ahead. of them are side fire. We can we use a side fire kiln for heating up our glass for uh, or our color bars from in the glass blowing studio. Also, I can uh, I have a small kiln that's uh, ten inches by eight inches by four inches. It's a very small kiln. However, we've had it for twenty eight years, I mm -hmm. guess. And I just recently put a new thermal couple in it and a and a new heating element. So the, that's pretty good maintenance on it. And it, uh, the total materials were uh, thirty nine dollars, including shipping. So right, ours isn't programmable. No, uh, ours isn't programmable. The big ones, our big kilns, are programmable. But our our little one is is you know, if we got just one little piece of glass we want to fire that's painted. We'll fire it in that because I can kind of control the temperature just by uh, doing it by hand on that kiln. It's just that sweet, y'all. Jenkin is a good name, and what is the other? Paragon. Paragon. Jenkin and Paragon. Paragon. So one of those. Yeah, Paragon and, you know and Jenkin. If you know it's a glass kiln, then you you can't go wrong. Yeah, you're gonna find that you're gonna find Paragon is uh, out of Florida, and Jenkin kilns are out of Florida, and, and they're just really. They've been doing this for a long time, and if you need a good kiln, they're they're your guy, they're your go-to people. So, okay, and they'll get it to you safely. So, do you have a story for tonight, or are you just gonna have to? 
I'm Wait. just going to have to, uh, I, don't, I don't think that I have a story for tonight as much as I'd love to tell a story. Um, <laughs> I've hmm. never seen him at a loss for words before, Ray. You got him stumped. Yeah. Uh, wow. I don't even you... have a story tonight, Ray. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. I guess Next you did get I'm my email, sure though, and, and thank you for shooting that back to me. I appreciate it. What's that? Nothing. The email I sent oh, to Ray okay. last okay. week. Okay. I'm, just, I'm glad that he Okay. I think, they, I think he's tired. No, yeah. we're good. Okay. I'm just, it's just been Next a big week's day. Next story time, yes. Y'all, I, I came in today. I stopped by the shop. This is a quick story. It's, it's nothing fancy, but it was really <laughs> worth my day. Actually, my day, worth my day is right now. But uh, so I came in the shop. I had to get something. I went back in the kitchen, got what I needed, and came out, and the phone was ringing. And I picked up the phone. It's our day off, yeah. It's our day off. So we're closed on Mondays. I mean, just a lot of galleries are closed on Mondays and stuff. So anyway, I pick up the phone, and it's a customer that I I spent quite a bit of time with on Friday, Friday afternoon, and uh, discussing uh, corporate gifts for her. And the company that she works for. So I, I just kind of, I, I really, I don't ever give anybody like an ultimatum for a job because I'm not really like, Arr. if we get it, we get it. If we don't, we don't. But I, for this particular job, I told her I had to, I had to know by today so that I could guarantee her corporate gifts by December the 5th. And sure enough, you know who was on that phone? The nice lady that I spent all that time with on Friday. And she gave us that corporate gift job today. And uh, so I had to go out in the parking lot and uh, Barbara was sitting in the car waiting on me. And I had to, I said, tell me what this is. And I did like a nice little jig dance kind of thing. And she said, what? What are you talking about? I said, I said, you got an order. I, yeah. She <laughs> says, you got an order. I said, not just any order, a big order. And then he wanted to take us to lunch. But we went home. We went home. <laughs> But uh, he was pretty happy. I was pretty happy. Happy hips. Happy hips. I'm, a, I'm a happy camper. And I'm just so glad that, uh, you know, because it's really tough not teaching the glass blowing classes because it does generate a tremendous amount of cash flow. And, uh, but I realized today that even though I miss that, I would much rather be blowing glass and. Uh, knowing that it's already sold and not having to teach somebody how to do it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for me. It's a Ed's, lot of work for Barbara. I mean, Ed's been teaching classes for 35 years. He's been teaching glass blowing classes for 20 years, 20 maybe. Years, yeah. And so yeah, it's, a, been, it's yeah. an enormous amount of physical work. You, you think it's not, but. It really is because you teach each, and it's repetition, so it's really hard. Yeah, we would, we do it's four harder. people an hour, one person every fifteen minutes, and it started at nine o'clock in the morning and went till four thirty in the. Sometimes afternoon he'd have thirty five students for the day individually throughout the day, and then at night sometimes people would want a party, we so a we party. had thirty more. So he might be teaching sixty five people a day, that, and it it was crazy. <laughs> and if, but, uh, and when you do the math. I mean, it was, it's a lot of cash flow, but it's not a, there's not a lot of profit in it because everything's running all day long, 12 or 14 hours a day, including me. And I'm, you know, I'm wearing myself out. So anyway. So it's getting cooler and it, we are getting ready to blow glass again. So we'll right. show y'all how that is. We'll and, get you uh, going on that. We have the furnace will be our, running this weekend. Yeah. As we get our orders ready for the season. So we have yeah. lots of orders lined up and we're really very happy. We're actually, yeah, very we're, blessed. we're very blessed this holiday season so far that uh, that we have gotten enough order corporate orders to offset the teaching of the classes. So that works really well for us. Uh, Pauline wants to know, she's thinking about teaching uh, stained glass classes and what should they, should she charge? Oh, huh. your, it, your time's worth a lot of money. Uh, typically, wait, look, look around. Okay. Uh, if you're going to, if you're going to teach copper foil and you're going to do, let's just say you're going to do two five hour days, that's 10 hours, uh, 
probably and and don't teach more than six people because there's always that one person that needs a little more attention and if you have more than six people you can't give it to them so uh i would if you're going to do six people uh saturday sunday class 275 to 300 dollars a person for the weekend and then you you need to include their materials too you know you need to include their glass and you need to include their you know, their tools and everything else. Well, you let them use your tools. Yeah, you, you let them use tools. your yeah. tools. And then you have a kit for them to buy. Uh, it's, it's quite involved. And, if, you know, teaching is fun, but you'll burn yourself out if you're not careful. So, After 30 years, you, you, uh, you're you burned need out. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're burned out. Your wick is not but we right. teach we teach a lot here on the RDRV channel. So we if do. you know anyone that wants to take a class, tell them to tune in. Right, and we thank we, you, Magali. Yeah, and we still haven't ruled out not teaching a stained glass class, like a weekend thing for 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 those everyone that wants to take a class. But I, I think what we would we would probably drop back to where we had uh, where we were very where we were very comfortable. Uh, maybe with three people and doing a weekend class eight hours a day. But that, I mean, it's not, uh, uh, you know, a class like that, 16 hours of, of class is a lot of money. Okay. All right. You ready to go? If you guys are ready to go, you know what? I hate to leave these people tonight, but everybody has to get some rest. Don't forget, if you're soldering now, don't go to bed till you finish it. Otherwise, you'll have a mess in the morning. <laughs> uh, Judith wanted to know if we do a class on using the kiln. Yes, we do. We do. I think he's got a class on. Do we have a class on melting glass? Yeah, on making melting glass, making uh, increasing your bottom line through fusing. Yeah, I think we do have a fusing class online. Not if, a lot of kiln classes. But, That's why we were asking if there was much interest in that. Right. So yeah, if there's an interest in kiln classes, you know, that's something that. And don't don't be afraid just because we're Q and A glass chat and all that RDRV. If you have a question about your kiln, uh, go ahead and don't be afraid to ask it on here because I'm not the only one in our in our community that has the general knowledge and workings of uh, a kiln. Okay, Judith is intimidated by her kiln. Uh, yeah, we'll go over some kiln advice judith um look look at our video and write down some questions about why you're intimidated about your kiln and shoot them to we us we can give you a couple tips on easy easy startup with your kiln some yeah. really easy projects that you can do yeah some easy projects we'd be happy to help you judith it's uh there are no secrets out there it's just the only thing that's out there is the things that haven't been said uh, Jennifer said she'd take the uh, weekend class. Yeah, that would be something we might do after the first of the year. Yeah, after the first of the year and we get all the, all of our orders straightened out and everything for the holidays. The holidays are really big for us, just like they are for y'all. So I do want to let you know, we've got some beautiful green glass and some beautiful reds for the holidays. And we've got white and white iridescent. If you're looking for glass and you're in the area, don't forget. Give us a call. We're open on Wednesdays without an appointment. If you're just coming through town, show up. And uh, we don't even close for lunch on Wednesdays. We stay here and have lunch here. So, uh, But if you're in town and you'd like to come by, please give us a call, make an appointment, or just show up on Wednesdays. We'd love to see you. Okay, guys. Um, if you want to know what we're doing in the meantime, you can go to our website. It's right up there. Uh, sign up for the newsletter and we send out a newsletter about once a month and we'll tell you everything we have going on. Yeah, and don't forget we have our annual Christmas ornament parking lot sale on Saturday, December the 3rd, 10 to 4. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Okay, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank